Hi guys, welcome to another Learn Electronics Repair video. Uh, a bit of variety at the moment, I'm getting quite a number of different jobs here. And uh, this is an amplifier. So, uh, Denon AVR X500, discrete amplifier for dynamic sound. Uh, it's got HDMI on it, so I, I don't know quite how old this is. I suspect it might be from the 90s. Um, so, here we have it. Um, customer says, it, well, I think he said it feels like it was crackly on the volume control, and now it has no sound. So it's possible we just got, you know, the volume control effectively is packed in. But this is a, a rotary encoder. It's not like a, a normal volume. At least I don't think so. It just turns round and round. So you think this is probably a rotary encoder. So the first thing I think we'll do with this is actually just plug it in and see what it does. Um, I don't think it's going to go bang or anything because the guy obviously has, you know, we know the history of it. It's not like an unknown, uh, an unknown thing here. Yeah, so um, let's uh, let's get this powered up and let's see what's actually it is doing or not doing. Um, does it power on? Is a question. It sounds like a little soft start button rather than an off switch. Yeah, so let's see. Um, yeah. Switch the switch off, put the power in. Okay, switch the switch on and see what it does. And it powers on. Yeah, it powers on. You can see that much. Yeah, the volume control is probably on the front. It's all doing so. Ah, so clunk, it made a clicky noise. Yeah, the volume is adjusting. Uh, so I'll connect some speakers to it now. Let's connect some audio to it and let's see what it does. Got some speakers attached to the amplifier now, so uh, we can at least uh, try this. Uh, I've just set it to radio tune, as soon as I don't at the moment have any uh, any audio source connected to it. But it's just not, you know, I expect to get some noise hissing or something, even if there's no uh, antenna attached to it. And I get nothing out of it. And we can just go uh, put the headphones in as well, and. Um, I get nothing out of it, yeah, it's not anything. I get a slight click on the speakers when I turn it on and off. Or rather, when I turn it off, not when I turn it on. So, hmm, I don't know, it's not doing anything really, so I think we have to open this up and let's have a look to see if we see anything obvious going on or not going on inside it, yeah? Okay, we can have our first look inside it. And I've also actually now connected an audio input into, into it here. Uh, in fact, I've put the wrong wire in. Should be the, uh, the black and the red. There we go. So I've got an audio uh, input. I've got some music playing off YouTube. I don't know if you can hear it, but there's a slight noise on the speakers, but not music. Key there, like a. So that's coming out of one of the speakers. If I pull the the headphones in, that stops. But I don't actually hear any any of that on the headphones. Yeah, only there. It's back again once I pull the headphones. So I think the first thing we want to do with this is try and figure out where the problem is. Um, so well, that made a little bumpy noise. I just touched that. If I don't need to do with it. There's some markings on the board here, so let's have a look, let's zoom down and let's see what that's telling us. So this actually got some uh, rather useful markings here, I think. So we can see uh, FL, SL, Z, SR, FR, yeah, and then some voltages, relay, some grounds. And I do hear a relay click on this when I select the, the, the input. Um, so I think we can say that FL and SL are front left and surround left, centre, surround right and front right. So that appears to be the five audio signals coming off this board going down to the main amplifier underneath. And I think this is the best place to start. If we get the oscilloscope and we have a look here, we can see whether or not we've got any audio to this point. And that will basically tell us if the problem is on this pre-amplifier board or if it's on the main amplifier board. 
So let me just get the cam and everything set up so you can see the oscilloscope. And let's have a look to see what we find there. I've rearranged the camera then so you can see the oscilloscope and you can see what I'm doing. So I've got an audio playing off YouTube now. I'm using the, the cables on the back here to feed the audio in. The amplifier is on and set to DVD. So these are plugged into the DVD input. So if you look on here, you can see on the oscilloscope, yeah? But we have an audio signal there playing, yeah? So you can see that. And this is the other input. So we definitely have audio coming into it. Now let's have a look at the audio coming out of it. So this is front left. Nothing, yeah? It's every other one. Surround sound left. Center. Uh, that's uh, surround sound right and front right. So there's no signals coming off this board. So that kind of is separated really between the front and the, and the front board, if you like. The front of this, the pre-amplifier and the main amplifier underneath. So I think the thing we need to do now is have a look to see what voltages we've got coming on. And there's actually a connector here and they marked on the board, but I'm struggling to get into a position under the camera so you can actually see the marking so I'm going to have to tell you which one's which and we can measure the voltages and let's see let's see what we've got it does tell us what voltage should be on this connector so that's really the next thing is do we actually have any any power on the preamplifier board or, or the correct power so we're on voltage range let's put that and you can't see it just get into a position where you can see it there you go so let's see what power supply rails so i'm just going to connect to the, the chassis basically with one end of the lead and then let's have a look so right this one's marked as plus 12 volts and we have plus 12 volts next one just says relay so i'm not sure what would actually be on that it's low uh no relay ground that says and then pre-amplifier ground and this is minus 12. So actually plus and minus 12, yeah? Then there's another ground. Then there's 5 volts. And then there's another ground. And then there's another 5 volts. Yeah. And then there's another ground. So that would appear that we have the, the correct voltage on there. There's another one here that comes off the, off the power board somewhere. And unfortunately, this one isn't actually marked, yeah? Well, let's have a look. I can see it comes from the power supply board. So let's see what's on this one as well. 12 volts. 3.3. Nothing on that one. It could be ground. Nothing on that one. Oh, actually, it, it is marked. It's just a bit small. Um, I'll have to get my magnifier probably. I'll see if I can just read it without. So it says 12 volts, power relay, power down. Something I can't read, but it's some sort of ground, and then 5 volts. So this is saying 12 volts, which we have, and 5 volts, which we have. So those all seem to be present. So it's looking like there's either a problem on this preamplifier somewhere. Right? Or there's something wrong with the logic that effectively is selecting the various inputs. Um, the next thing I'd like to do with this is let's see if we can find some sort of schematic for this. I think that's going to be helpful to repair this one. Well, guys, it's actually uh, working now, um, but I didn't actually have to fix it. Um, so I had a bit of a look. I figured out that everything comes through this chip here, and I had a data sheet for this chip. I decided to ask if anybody had a repair guide or schematic on bad caps for them. And the uh, guy came back to me. Um, so I'm going to put these files on the Learning Electronics Repair Discord as well. Um, but basically, th th this is me. Uh, you'll find me on the uh, bad caps. And I'm not an expert on audio amplifiers. I can fix them, especially the analog ones. And then. Um, this guy came back to me, so I asked uh, 2.36, and 12 minutes later, uh, this guy in Russia came back to me and gave me the service manual. Um, 
He asked me to see if I was getting an output. This has a HDMI output going to a monitor uh, on, the, on the TV or a monitor. I don't have, but as I'm saying here, look, I messed around with the options to hold down various buttons and press power at the same time. And after trying a few combinations, it started to work. So that's basically what I've done. Um, this is the information for these. So if anybody else is looking at one of these, I hope this video will help you. Uh, in this sort of case, there may not be a problem at all. Um, it's I um, tried this one, initialization mode. So holding down source select left and um, source select right at the same time. And that didn't seem to do anything. So I then tried again. So you basically you press the power button while you're holding two buttons in. I tried to get into this protection history one, and it didn't work. It came up with some menu option that says something like updating OSD, and just sat there for like five minutes, and I couldn't do anything with any buttons. I couldn't even switch it off with a button on the front of it. Uh, so anyhow, after five minutes, I just unplugged it, plugged it back in, and would you believe it, it's actually started to work. So um, I don't think anybody claimed copyright on this. Uh, so we can start uh, some music. Yeah. A bit of Northern Soul, funky. Yeah. So you can see. You can see that's working, you can hear that's working. So quite clearly this is now repaired. And yet it seems that this was basically down to effectively some sort of software or firmware glitch and nothing to do with actually an electronics fault. So there you go, um, another one fixed. Um, I think this goes to show that sometimes with these things you should just ask, yeah, I mean I have, a lot of experience, but sometimes with these things, I just ask, and what within 12 minutes the guy gave me an answer. Okay, hope you enjoyed that one, guys, and uh, see you all soon on another.